Hello, I'm Neil Quigley and welcome to the latest episode of my blogcast, which is basically just me talking about what I've been up to whilst having a cup of tea. Simple as that, doesn't pretend to be anything else. Long story short, for many years I used to do a fortnightly blog on my website and then the last few months I decided, bearing in mind my history of radio presentation and production, I thought it might make sense to do it as a blogcast. I am a big theatre fan and I do try and get to see as many shows as I possibly can. Obviously, I can't go and see everything, but on average, I do at least manage two or three shows every single month. For example, recently I went and saw The Unfriend at the Criterion Theatre in London. It's written by Stephen Moffat, it's directed by Mark Gatiss and it stars Reese Shearsmith Amanda Abington and Francis Barber. It is excellent. It's a comedy. It's very clever. It's got a lot of up-to-date and modern references. There does seem to be a lot of interest in kind of true crime stuff for either podcasts or research on the internet. And it kind of plays on that a little bit as well. But also, with it being a Stephen Moffat production, there are some moral dilemmas thrown in and some should we take people on face value or what we've heard about them as how we decide how we respond and interact with them. But more than anything else, it's just very, very funny. The cast, as you would imagine, are absolutely excellent. It is basically a two-set play, so there's not much change in it. It all happens and takes place in pretty much exactly the same location, but it is very cleverly and very slickly done. It's only on for quite a short run, so if you do get a chance to see it, I would go along. It's worth it. I'm certainly glad I made the effort to go along and see it. While I was there, during the interval, I actually bumped into someone I used to know about 10, 15 years ago. I used to work at the local radio station and he was involved with the local theatre and we used to do a lot of cross-promotion and do a lot of events and stuff with each other. As it happens, he's now working in the theatre in London and I'm now working in radio in London. We're not seeing each other for a while. We are friends on Facebook, so we do have some sort of contact still. But it was so nice. It was just that moment because we're not seeing each other in person for quite a while. I walked past him, he walked past me. We both basically stopped and did a double take at exactly the same time before we just said each other's name out loud and realised we were who we thought each other were. Had a fantastic chat with him, that was really good. That made what was a great trip to the theatre even better. The only thing, and it's not a criticism, because it is good for the environment, but I'm still trying to get my head around wine in cans. I know it's easier to recycle them that way, but I'm not convinced just yet that the wine in cans necessarily taste the best. And it was only canned wine that was available on the night. That said, thoroughly enjoyable night once again at the theatre. And between me and you, I'm hoping Stephen Moffat might write more theatre plays. I think this was possibly his first one. He's definitely very good at it. He should definitely write some more. Last week, it was actually the third anniversary of mine and my girlfriend's first date, which is quite a landmark for me. I haven't had that many long-term relationships, and this one is the longest by quite some way. I thought I was fairly smooth, or at least organised, as on the day of the anniversary, I had some flowers and a card delivered to my girlfriend's house. And then we actually went out to have dinner the night after, and we went to the restaurant where we went on our second date, which was kind of our first proper date, in that it was the first date where we both had a few alcoholic drinks and kind of really chatted and got to know each other better. In fact, that date was fairly epic. We met in the restaurant. Only the second time we'd met each other, I arrived first and I knew that my girlfriend had booked the table. At that point, I only knew her first name. So I had to kind of See, you've had a table for that name. There was two tables. He offered me two surnames. Luckily, I somehow managed to guess the right one and it all worked out fine. On that very first date, the only options the restaurant had were either 6 o'clock or 8.30. We both figured 8.30 was a bit too late to eat, especially as we were still getting to know each other at that stage. So we didn't want to have too many drinks before food. So we went for the 6 o'clock booking. We had to be out of there by just after 8 o'clock, 
We then moved on to the pub next door. The plan was just to have another drink in there. Well, fast forward to closing time and we're still in the pub having to leave and get separate taxis home. So therefore, as we had such a great time that night in that restaurant for the third anniversary, it made sense to go there again. It's a place called Tabur in Berkhampstead. They've got a few other restaurants dotted around the area. It's a Turkish restaurant and they do do excellent food in there. The food is really good. There are a lot of gluten-free options and they are good with celiacs as well. So I've eaten there several times now and I've always been fine. They've always looked after me very well. It's always a good place to go and we had a great time there as always. And just for old time's sakes, even though the anniversary booking was a lot later than the original one, we still went to the pub next door to have a couple of drinks in there. Although we were a bit more responsible and we did leave the pub quite a bit earlier than previously. Talking of the celiac disease I have, which I was diagnosed with just over two years ago now, it means I have to be on a very strict gluten-free diet. So not only can I only have gluten-free food, I have to be very careful how it's cooked because cross-contamination is a problem. Even the smallest grain of gluten can make me very, very ill for quite a long period of time. So I just have to be super careful. It does make eating out a little bit more difficult sometimes. And there are just some places I can't go. But generally, I'll ask all the questions I need to know. And I just like places to be honest with me. If they can't guarantee or fully supply me with a gluten-free meal, I'd rather know. There is a fantastic charity called Celiac UK who do so much for celiacs and offer so much information, advice and help they have a scheme whereby restaurants can become accredited with them and basically get signed off on a certain level of service and standard, proving that they can supply gluten-free food with no cross-contamination. They follow certain procedures that make it completely safe. Generally, I try to eat out only in the places that are on the accredited list. Obviously, that's not always possible. And to be fair, I always try and email in advance or phone in advance and ask the place where I'm going if they can meet my requirements. Before I was diagnosed as celiac, it wasn't something I'd actually ever heard of, never knew about it until I discovered that I had it. Once I had been diagnosed with it, I put out a message on social media, and it just so happened two people I knew and were friends with actually were celiac and had been for several years. That was very, very helpful because it meant I could talk to them and ask them lots of questions and things I might need to know. Well, already I've got the opportunity to return that favour. One of my mate's wives has also just been diagnosed as a celiac. So she now too has got to go on a fully strict gluten-free diet. So I'm giving her all the advice I possibly can and helping her to avoid some of the pitfalls I did. At the start, you think avoiding gluten's pretty easy. You know the obvious things that have gluten in, they should be easy to avoid. That is very true. However, you don't realise how many things include gluten either discreetly or in some other way or via another ingredient source. It is a bit more of a minefield and also with lots of things Flour is sometimes used to coat or thicken. That is no good for someone who's celiac because the flour generally they use will be gluten-containing flour. I'm glad, hopefully, I'll be able to help her. It's not that bad. It is manageable being a celiac. I just have to be very careful. And generally, there isn't really anything I can't buy myself. I just have to make sure I hunt down and find the gluten-free version of it. Now, as I said earlier in this episode, I do try and get to the theatre as much as I can. My local theatre used to be the Waterside in Aylesbury. I worked at the radio station in the town for many years in a couple of different spells. It's a great theatre. I remember when it opened and they put on some amazing, spectacular special performances right at the start. And it's modern. It's great. I've actually very briefly appeared on stage there. A mate of mine called Ben Langley, who was on Britain's Got Talent a few years ago, he was touring in a show with Joe Pasquale that he'd written called Ha Ha Homes. And long story short, I saw it originally in High Wycombe and there was a bit of a cameo available in the second half. Now, at the end of the show in Wycombe, I met up with Ben and I kind of asked him if maybe when it came to Aylesbury, 
I could play that part. And he was touring all over the country with this show, so it's months apart when they actually got back to Wellsbury. When he did that, I agreed to meet up with him before and indeed after the show, and I did ask the question once again if I could play the part. Generally, just one of the theatre stagehands had been doing it. It was only a very small and tiny thing. Anyway, to my delight, he let me do it. So I watched the first half of the show from the auditorium, went backstage in the interval to meet up with Ben in his dressing room and to get my outfit on. Basically, I was playing a beaver. I was dressed in a beaver outfit and he roughly explained what I needed to do. I knew kind of because I'd seen the play before, so I knew what the deal was. Got the costume on just before the second half of the play was going to start. He sat me in the wigs, basically said, sit there, no problem. I'll be off stage for a minute or so before you're needed. So basically, sit there, relax, and I'll come and get you ready before you go on. Brilliant. Was really looking forward to it. So I'm sitting there in the outfit, but without the head on. Anyway, Ben suddenly comes running off stage. He goes, you're on, you're on. And I was like, what, what? He goes, basically, Joe Pasquale, unfortunately, had missed a bit of the script out and we kind of jumped to the bit where I was. So I had to get out there. Ben just threw my head on and pushed me onto stage. Unfortunately, the head wasn't on quite straight and the eye holes hadn't matched up. So I couldn't quite see what was happening and where I was going. The role was, dressed in the beaver suit, I had to walk slowly across the stage. I like it if I liked, wave at the audience or just, you know, mess around. What I'd forgotten was, in the panic, as part of me walking across, a gag that supposedly failed from earlier then appears. So something falls from the sky and lands behind me. And it made a louder bump than I was expecting. Also on the stage, perched at the other side, was a pianist who was on stage throughout the play. As I walked across, by the time I heard this bang, I was getting to where I thought he was and I couldn't see. So for a second, I thought I'd walked into his keyboard and knock that flying. Anyway, I just continued walking, got to the wings. Ben was there to grab me. Basically, the gag was the beaver was just like walking through the woods and going to the local supermarket. So he gave me a plastic carrier bag then I just had to walk back across the stage. Then on the way off, I was supposed to pick up and take off the thing that had fallen down. I still can't see because the head's still not on properly. So my cue comes, Ben pushes me back onto the stage. I'm slowly walking around. I don't quite enjoy myself now. I'm sort of messing about, waving at Joe a bit, waving at the audience. There's a few noises for the crowd. Anyway, I know roughly where this thing is I have to pick up. What I have to pick up is a giant inflatable woman, basically. But I really can't see. Now, I bend down to try and pick it up. And the idea is I'm just supposed to grab it by the legs and kind of drag it off stage. I couldn't see. And I unfortunately grabbed a bit higher than I really should have. And basically right between the legs and picked up the blow up lady and took it off stage. I could hear lots of laughter. The audience were absolutely going crazy laughing. What I also thought I could hear was Joe Pasquale laughing, and I could, because when he next got off stage, he was still smiling, and he said, when you picked up that doll, he said, I nearly wet myself, I was laughing so much. It did get a massive response, I did love the laughter. I'm not sure Ben's going to invite me to appear in any of his other shows, but I did really enjoy it. Anyway, as I was saying, I went to the Waterside Theatre to watch a show that I originally saw when I was in school. In fact, we studied it in our English lessons. I remember reading the book of the play. In fact, our English teacher, Mr. Late, used to do all the voices as well, which kind of brought it to life. And the play in question is J.B. Priestley's An Inspector Calls. It's a real moral dilemma piece, and it does really make you think. It's thought-provoking, it's full of mystery. I went and saw another version of it about 10 years ago, which was just much darker the version I saw in school kind of left everything open to interpretation and the inspector's line of questioning was probably a bit gentler. The latest production I saw was kind of a cross between both of those. It wasn't quite as light as the one I saw in school, but it wasn't quite as dark as the one I saw 10 years ago. But it was absolutely brilliant. The cast were fantastic. It's a very clever interwoven story that keeps you on the edge of your seat. And there are a few surprises along the way. I must admit, having studied it for English lessons, seen it when I was at school, watched it again 10 years ago, seeing it this time, I could pretty much remember exactly what was going to happen. 
Well, almost. There was one bit on the end that did catch me out and make me jump that I probably should have remembered, but I forgot. It is a very clever play. It definitely stands the test of time. It is absolutely as relevant now as it was when it was originally written, if not more so, to be perfectly honest. If you get a chance, it is definitely worth a trip to the theatre to see that. My girlfriend and I went and saw one of my best mates and his wife and children at their house. It was the old thing. We've been meaning to catch up for ages, hadn't got round to doing it. So eventually we got a date in the diary and managed to get to see them. They recently moved into a new house as one of the different areas. So it was good to go and visit. Happily, they had a spare room so we could go and see them and stay over, which was brilliant. And it was a very basic, simple plan to the evening. Linda has ever made some dessert, a fantastic cheesecake. We took a few drinks over and we got a takeaway towards the end of the evening. But it was one of those times, you know when you just catch up with friends that you haven't seen for a long time, that you get on really well with. We talked about everything you could imagine. We just had a laugh and there was no other entertainment or anything to do other than just chat. We didn't play any games. We didn't watch any television. We didn't watch a film. Didn't listen to any music. We just had some food, had a few drinks and chatted. We got there at five o'clock. It was 1am before we knew it. One of those nights where it just flies by and you have a fantastic time. It was great. It's one of those things in life, one of those simple things that you should just do more of. Just spend time with friends, have it a laugh. Although it did make the following morning a little bit difficult when I had to get up early to get to a train station and get to London to watch Tottenham play. Although that did work out quite nicely because we actually beat Chelsea in the Premier League at home for the first time in what seems like a very long time. And it was great to see not only one of our former academy players get his first goal for the club, Oliver Skip, the second goal was scored by another Tottenham graduate who you may have heard of called Harry Kane who added to his record goal score in tally and it was good to beat them. That on the back of beating West Ham at home the other week as well. To win two London derbies in a row against teams that we often struggle against at home is very pleasing. I'll say that. So once again, I'm enjoying going to the games at the moment. They're good fun. This week, it was my girlfriend's birthday. As I think I've said before, it's quite an expensive time for me with Valentine's Day on the 14th of February, our anniversary on the 23rd of February and her birthday on the 1st of March. But in a way, I have to remember a lot of things, but only for a short space of time. So I guess overall, it's not too bad. As part of the birthday celebrations, we decided to go away for the weekend. However, we couldn't quite manage to get any extra days off either side of the Saturday and Sunday. So I did some digging around, found some reasonably priced flights and we got a decent deal on a hotel. So a long story short, we are going to go to Jersey for one afternoon and one night and a bit of the following morning. We fly out on the Saturday morning, get there about half 11. We got all Saturday, Saturday night there and then we fly home round about three o'clock on the Sunday. So we're going to try and see as much as we can in a very short space of time. Neither of us have been before. I'll tell you about that trip and what it was like next time we speak. That's about it. Just the normal reminder that you can listen if you want to my radio show Saturday afternoons at two o'clock on Radio9Springs.com. Now that really is it for this week's broadcast. Look after yourselves, have fun, make sure you just find some time to chat and laugh with friends. I speak to you soon. Bye-bye.